being the RSL. And the Chief of Army at the time was saying to the young officers, or all officers in the 1980s, without further commitment, this one organisation will wither from the line. So, being an earnest young officer, I got a letter, thinking of a letter from Chief of Army, that I need to do something about it. And for some reason, had in my mind, the sandstone entry to this club. So, in fact, he just came down here and walked up the stairs, I think, to the third floor, which had given him my form and became a member. I'd love to say I was still a member, but some years later, and Army people, you will know this, uh, when an officer is presented with something by a, a, an RSC and says, sign this sir, um, generally, if you, you sign it, sometimes you have a little book, but uh, you're known to uh, RSM Kevin Connolly, uh, the core transport of RSM, and uh, I have been appointed as the patron, or separately the patron of the British Transport and Squadron Association. And uh, he told me something else was going to come with it, and he decided I should transfer the Asheville RSL sub branch, of which I'm now also paying for the Asheville RSL sub branch. So, uh, this is my spiritual home, I should say. And I don't know how long serving some of the members were, but I do know that when I, I joined this branch, one of the first events I turned up to. Then discovered that my uncle Jack Camden was a member of this branch. Uncle Jack uh, was a soldier of the Second Seventeenth Battalion of Westminster Leaders, a 19 year old at uh, Hill and uh, it was a great thing to be connected to this. But I'm always conscious that I talk army things only. I'll come back to that. But in deference to the senior service, uh, my wife's late auntie, Jess Doyle, and again, brands of the room, they may know her because she was the third woman to be commissioned in the Rams in the Second World War and uh, uh, was uh, director of Rams in the 1950s and then for many, many, many years uh, president of the Rams Association of New South Wales. But Jess tells a wonderful story of coming to the dances in the canteen that uh, was here in this, uh, as a, uh, this building and uh, how her friend was to probably two more attractive young RAN officers, uh, struck up with, uh, with the, the friendships with these visiting RN officers, particularly her mate became a girl, correct me if I'm who was later Prince Philip. Oh. Uh, so Prince Philip, actually, this is uh, recorded that uh, in 1945, she, he was uh, supposed to, you say supposed to, supposed to uh, was uh, here on the Australian station, and uh, he was single then, so he couldn't have done this thing. <laughs> so I do feel a close connection uh, to this place and I'm absolutely delighted to be invited to address you at the APF uh, luncheon, although Rob would be a good staff officer and he could be a topic which is about the government's role, which I'll come to in a moment. As I look around this room, I see so many friendly faces, so many people I've dealt with both the community of activities with the government, but even going back to my army service. I think as a brand new officer there receiving very erudite lectures from the then Lieutenant Colonel John Moore, uh, and indeed you, Ron, I remember you with the, well, later on, uh, when you were an officer, I wasn't so frightened of you, but uh, when you were a staff sergeant, <laughs> I uh, had some fear and trepidation. Yeah, well, we but most fear and trepidation I had is to see the new my recollection of my first 40 years in the army as an officer was that it was you wind up the time that you wind up the things. You wind up at the queue store, the wait. You wind up at the message of wait. You even wind up as much to church parade. They didn't even wind up as spiritual company. Uh, but also, the amount of time I felt standing, uh, standing in our underpants, uh, waiting in cold corridors uh, for another medical, uh, to just say, I'm a few months So I think I got one of those from Dr. Cameron. So soon, you probably don't recognize me with all my clothes on. <laughs> but I do remember you as an RMO. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
and that governance commission extinguishes the previous uh, one. There are words of the commission to say that. Uh, that makes sure that we're never without someone in charge. And if, if, ladies and gentlemen, when you were asking me, is that a good system? Yes, I don't think it is. If you have a look at our American uh, friends, what happens with their chambers uh, in the state, I think we have a very good uh, system. The government's term uh, is notionally about five years, uh, but as I said, Her Excellency serves at the, the King's pleasure and the Minister's pleasure. And my appointment is a bit like that. I say like the psychiatric prisoners. I remain at Her, Her Excellency's pleasure. Thank you very much. But the Governor is also perhaps the representative of all the people of the state. And it's clear that it's not the case. Um, the, um, the metro system. Um, now, having said this, well, most of it, there's a usually an equitable solution because due compensation must be paid. That's what the, the policy opposition says. But there is a, a final thing that probably pushes point of to come to a settlement is that authority for the compulsory acquisition of land. So are these things arbitrarily done? No, I think executive council is on the same path. 